Welcome to Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for this Monday, May 28, 2012. Our top story is from the world of biotechnology. Scientists over at UC San Diego have developed a potential malaria vaccine using algae. Now this is extremely important as malaria affects about 225 million people and is a risk in regions containing about 2 billion people total. Currently, there are some medications that can reduce the likelihood of catching malaria, but such medications are expensive and don't offer the long-term protection of a vaccine. Those with a basic knowledge of how vaccines work might be wondering why making one for malaria isn't already done. Normally, a dead, weakened, or a particular protein from a pathogen is injected into the body to generate an immune response. However, malaria is caused by a protozoan parasite, and therefore the proteins that would be used in a vaccine are much more complex than usual. Most vaccine proteins are made by engineered bacteria, which just can't reliably produce the complex 3D protein similar to the malaria parasite. This is where algae comes in, already heavily investigated for its potential to make fuels and other products. Recently, a big study showed that algae could also produce proteins used for medical treatments, such as antibodies or growth hormones. With this knowledge, the San Diego team engineered an algae to produce a protein similar to one found in the malaria parasite. They then injected this into mice and it acted like a vaccine. The mice produced antibodies against the protein and then were protected from malaria infection when exposed to the parasite, meaning further research could eventually lead to a cheap and effective malaria vaccine. Next is a quick update from the world of medicine. Researchers in Australia have tested a new cancer drug and found it shrinks brain tumors. This is particularly exciting because this drug was originally tested for melanoma, which is the most deadly form of skin cancer. Partly it's deadly because it's traditionally very resistant to drugs and has a tendency to metastasize. If the melanoma spreads to the brain, the prognosis is very bad with most patients dying in about four months. Not only did this new drug show incredible results when treating the primary melanoma, but is the first drug to effectively treat these secondary brain tumors. Ten patients with the metastasis were trialed with the drug, all lived past five months, and nine showed decrease in tumor size. Now, this drug targets a mutated protein found in half of melanomas. Still, it's a promising development. We end with a story from the world of genetics. A team from the University of Chicago have developed a new method for analyzing DNA with increased resolution. You may be wondering why DNA reading needs increased resolution, considering it's just nucleotide bases A, T, C, and G, which we can already sequence. Well, DNA containing only four base pairs is technically wrong. In this particular case, we're talking about two different versions of the base cytosine. These different versions, although very similar in structure, mean completely different things in the genetic code and are part of epigenetics, which means the information above the genome that regulates it. These two versions are 5-methylcytosine and 5-hydroxymethylcytosine. For some time, methyl C has been studied, but hydro C is a relatively new discovery, and this is the first time both can be mapped out in exact detail. Methyl C helps silence genes that are meant to be turned off, whereas hydro C seems to have the opposite effect. The new technique for analysis was tested on mouse and human embryonic stem cells, revealing the importance of this regulatory mechanism. Hydro C, for example, is found most abundantly in stretches called enhancers, which don't code for proteins, just help regulate the expression of other genes. And this is just scratching the surface of potential discoveries, such as Hydro C's role in brain development, which seems significant. To top it off, an enzyme that converts methyl to Hydro C can malfunction and cause leukemia, meaning this analysis technique will also help cancer research. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider subscribing and be sure to check the links in the video description.